times. Uh, there's a few patterns of tie in this in this style uh, that basically you've got your cinnamon caddis. Uh, this is a quilt caddis I like to dye with the quilt body. Uh, it does really well. And you get the dark or the dark brown or the chocolate brown uh, caddis as well. By the moment uh, this fly is going to be coming on the water in the next uh, sort of few weeks. Uh, the granum, depending on the part of the country, where I am, you're usually looking towards uh, the end of April. Uh, in some places down in the UK and England, you, you could get them as early as February. So, but anyway, who I'm using? This is uh, the fully mill, and it's a size 16. It's the ultimate dry fly uh, hook. Uh, basically, nice up point in the barbless hooks. I find hook much better. Now, the thread I'm going to be using is the Rusty Dunn. An 8 -oh. Now I've run the wax through it, I'm just going to start slightly short of the eye. And the way down I'm going to tie in a tail. Now the granum is known as a green tail. Now the green tail is basically what it's representing is the egg sac. The female obviously carries around the egg sac. Uh, and I'm representing this with a uh, glow bright floss number 12, this one here. Now the, the number 12 is just a fluorescent or a lime green. Now now, and to make that, you need about, say, six or more strands, and then just brush them together, and this will give you the tail. Now, the reason I'm tying it straight onto the hook is to save a bit of bulk. And uh, what, I, what I do is, when I'm winding it down, I actually push it onto the hook, meaning the fibres round the shank, so it gets plenty of grip, and the thread been waxed, this will not slip. Now, I'm taking a turn underneath and a turn on top, which will lock it. You only need a short, short impression of the tail, is just paste it to the back of the hook, and that's it. Now, I'm going to use three natural coloured CDC feathers. Two for the wing and one for the body. Now, you could use a dubbing in the body, you don't necessarily need the CDC, but it does add to the, the basically, the floatability of the fly, it helps to keep it up. Now, what I'm doing here is pulling two feathers together, the natural curve, you imagine it's facing up the way. Line the ends up, just draw these fibres together and then hold them at the ends. Then we tie these on. Now just a quick turn round, a couple of turns, make sure you're on at the tail. Just check where you are. That's fine. And I've got my other feather. Hold it at the thick end of the feather at the bottom. And all we do is do a loose turn round and slide this or pull it to the tip. And then what we do is work our way up. Now make sure you watch your thread at this point to give you plenty of grip. And then we work our way up till about three quarters of the way, just enough to a small thorax there. Now to protect this, what I'm going to do is wind the CDC feather over some super glue. Now this is a fully mill super glue, it comes with a brush, so it's easy to apply. And then we use the CDC feather as a as a hero. We wind up. Now you want a reasonably thick body, because the caddis body is quite thick to this point here. Catch it in. And then we trim away the waste. Now a wee bit of wax on the thread, tidy this area up. There we are. Now form the loop or the wing. Just drawing back CDC feathers, fibres we don't need, and then we just form this bubble. Now we don't want it too big, so we hold it. Pinch. I usually get the stems in line. The 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 body of the fly. Hold it. Just make sure you get it right. length that you're happy with, just by the tail. We come in, pinch and loop, two or three turns. Now the stems of the CDC feathers are really thick. So what I'm going to do is just check, we're okay. We need that bubble in there to form this, what holds, helps to hold the fly up. Secure this in, and then we can trim away the waste. See how it's looking. Now we can get a needle. And encourage this to sit, sit, or just 
for in the bubble. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie in a bit of roe deer. It's normal roe deer. It's part of the wing. Now you don't need much. Just bring it out, the tips are lining up. You can stack it if you wish. And then we just have this coming by the end of the CDC. So we hold what we want, a finger and thumb, is a wing, trim away the waist. Come on top here, and then we just simply pinch it on, tie in these ends, nice and tight. We have a wax on with thread, make sure there's plenty of grip there. That's fine. Now, this is up to yourself. Now I've got a bronze mallard feather here, I'm going to put some horns. But I'm going to lay the horns back, just over the back. Now I'm using the grey side, not the brown side, the grey side. And then tear this away, make for really good horns, got a nice taper in the fibre. Obviously want it longer than the wing, sitting on the top. On either side of the wing, you can pinch this on, two or three turns. Trim away the waist. Now, we better wax on with thread. Now, you, at this point, what you can do is you can either have a hackle it in front, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny bit of dubbing on it. Now, make sure your thread comes right up to the, to the wing. Now, anti clockwise spin your bobbin to loosen the thread, flatten it, wax the thread, and then we get our needle, rub it. This will flatten the thread as you can see there so that you can split it. Quite easy to split once you, once you wax it. And then what I've got here is a natural fox squirrel, grey fox, with a wee tiny bit of UV in it, tiny wee bit. It's just a, a like a diamond bright UV just into the split. Now spread it out so you get you don't want it too heavy or too thick. Give the impression of legs. And then we spin the bobbin clockwise. And this will tighten the thread turns back up. You may have to do it a couple of times to make sure it's getting there. Now you can see it's starting to spin now. And then you tighten up. And you see how it's quite thin that is, it's not very heavy. And then we just wind it like we do, we do a hackle, we do a turn, we do then pouring the fibres back. We can then do a turn in front and we can work our way down. Nice and tight. Quite sparse, let me see what it looks like. That's fine. Just draw back these fibres. And then what we can do, we touch a varnish on the thread. Then we flat finish. Trim away the thread, trim this wee fibre away as well. And there we are. And that's the CDC granum. And it's a simple dressing, it's very easy to tie. Uh, these flies you can pull because of the bubble. Uh, it traps the air inside the, the, the CDC and it, it pops straight back up. And it's caught me lots and lots of fish. And as well, it's a very good, if you're fishing nymphs or a nymph, like represent the granum or even anything else, you can piggyback or tie a piece of nylon onto the back and piggyback below this fly. And this acts as a good aiming point if the drift obviously draws away, as well as obviously catching the fish. Now that's the, the green tail or the granum uh, tied in the CDC bubble version. So I hope you enjoyed that. Mm.